All right, hey everybody, it's Antagonist Kim, and we're back with more Disco Elysium. So, we're like 10 minutes away from being able to call the library, all right? Last episode was kind of a bust because I thought with this new tool and some other information that we could possibly interact with more things, but that kind of didn't work out. So, here we are. <laughs> so close to this. Um... Let's look in the journal here. Uh, we did at least unlock the singing the karaoke, so we'll be able to take that off of Monday's roster. Some of these other things they're saying are going to take s quite a bit of time to uh, to do. Uh, we could ask more people about the victim's tattoo, but again, I've kind of run into a lot of different people, and they won't really say anything else. Like, there's no option to ask this. Uh, we weren't able to do the hangman's boot one because, well... His body's already been taken away. So. We can't do much about this. However, we do have the... Cur the uh, Karas, which is like the chest plate and the two armored hands. So I think that's a win. Uh, we did talk to Titus a little more. But we didn't really get anywhere because our authority is still, for me, not comfortable enough to be like, yo, you need to put up or shut up kind of thing. Uh, we let him know that, hey, Everett Claire said, hey, you should talk to us. And he's like, yeah, right, whatever about it. Um, we need to find someone to fake sign this document. Although I'm kind of tempted to uh, just put it in the mailbox, to be real. I might go back over. This is a, a, about a roll check, too. So once we figure this out... And the raider ravers get to be inside the church. I think to get a cell to hang out with their associates. They're saying once they're in the nightclub, it might be she might be able to talk to them again. And then we might be able to solve all of these, which would take a lot of stuff off the list too. So yeah, I think I think that is what we are waiting on. We got <laughs> ay ay ay. All right, we got ten minutes. No, yeah, twenty minutes it needs to be ten o'clock. So. What else do we think we want to do here? We kind of got some new cool clothes and stuff, but nothing really too crazy. Got these fancy dice. We still have this schedule filament. I'm not sure if we actually need this or not. Empty cassette. This is for, I'm assuming, something else. We have our sad song, so we can do all that. We got this filthy jacket for some reason last episode. I don't know why we really want to pick that up. And then as far as upgrades, guys, there's another thing, too. I think conceptualization is the one we need to level up to pass the old lady one. And uh, Cindy the Skull to give us the paintbrush and the mega rich light bending guy to give us his stuff, too. So, Although the strike a deal with the mega rich light bending guy is not on here anymore, so I don't know. We knocked off stuff for Thursday. The only person that kind of reacted to this tattoo thing was, uh, the buff guy. But he was kind of getting into, like, a weird grapey story that we weren't sure we wanted to finish hearing. But I don't know if there's anyone else we can, like, actually... Was that guy always up there on top of the... Top of the truck? As bad as it sounds, we might need to internalize that racism stuff with Measurehead up there. He might be able to maybe tell us more about the tattoos. He's really kind of the only other person I can think about that hasn't been uh, really delved into. I think he has an option left. Which unfortunately is the one we internalized to like gain his favor to open this area up. But we didn't really need it after we just made the jump ourselves, so I feel kind of bad for even starting that. Your race descent has only worsened since I last saw you. You have really let yourself go. Okay. Um, did we go into this yet? Let's go over that funky race classification again. There is nothing funky oh, we did. about them. I cannot possibly imagine what else we have to discuss, Tiberi Vasholian. 
can't talk to these ladies anymore. We were able to talk to the one, but she's like, nah, no thanks. Let me just check one more time. I'm almost certain it's conceptualization. We did discover Leo helps out the gang with stuff. We and we called a uh, a phone number that we felt like was familiar to us and ended up being a video rental store. They told us about this super sad show movie that we rented. And uh, honestly, it's kind of messed up. This, you essentially like get dementia and forget everything, so it makes me wonder if that's supposed to be like related to us. Now you're like your bending guy. Welcome back, gentlemen. What can I do for you? It is. It's conceptualization. So let's just write that down. I'm almost certain it's the same for Cindy. Yeah. Alright. Sorry, my guy. I just wanted to double check that. I'm trying to think who could forge this other signature for us. Actually, I'm going to talk to you in a bit, Kim. Can you forge this signature? Yes. No, of course not. Very well, then. Let's go back up here. Could talk to the... I really don't want to talk to Kuno and them again, but... Is there anything new with you, Minyana? I don't think there is. Hold on, wondering man. How can I? No. <sighs> Time has not passed at all. Oh, please. Is there anything else with you? Right to work! Right to work! Shame on you! Okay, now he's supposed to be one of the mercenaries. Uh, we haven't found the other mercenary. This is the only one we haven't picked. What's the strike? When a bunch of ungrateful, lazy cockroaches can't get their act together, decide to block honest work for other people. He shifts uncomfortably in his workers' overalls. Uh, what do the strikers want? Beats me. They mumble nonsense about boardrooms and workers' rights, while we have the right to work there's something odd in the way he carries himself his set of clothing looks vaguely mismatched the different pieces of the attire seem ill-fitting ill-fitting what does that mean his shirt is far too small and an unpleasantly tight fit while the overalls held up by a belt seem to fit a man with much more corpulence you wearing new clothes he ignores your question Choosing instead to turn to the emaciated workers, raising both fists in the air. The clothes are obviously not his. I never noticed that, that his sleeves are like shortened. <laughs> and the buttons are like split open in the front of his chest. That's Silence funny. is the answer. There's something off here, but he won't say what. You've been talking to him for quite a while now. Something is off with this guy. Ask him where he's from. Are you a mercenary hired by the Wild Pines? It seems like we asked him this, but... Hell no. I'm just an honest scab. I won't have talk like that around here. You understand? It just has to be said. That was not a convincing line. Oh, so we did say, hell no, I'm just an honest scab. That doesn't sound too convincing. We didn't ask him about the tribunal. The tribunal is supposed to be this thing that, uh... The mercenaries are supposedly going to do to, uh... Essentially, the Hardy Boys for hanging their dude in the back of the whirling and rags. Let's see if he reacts to this real quick. I didn't realize this option was here. I uh, uh, say very quietly. Is there a tribunal being convened by any chance? Fucking fuck. He breathes out slowly, his giant chest deflating and his mouth slightly open. I'm going to interpret that as a yes. There's a tribunal, and it won't be long until it's ready. How about you fuck off now, huh? Okay, of course. Lieutenant says, his voice is soothingly calm. He looks at you. There could be weapons aiming at us right now. Somewhere above, 
in the buildings. The other Merc. Don't push this, he's thinking. This is not the time. Okay. The man's breathing steadies, but his eyes are still narrow. Slowly, he's trying to get his right to work dance back on. Okay, so then. Is there anything you can do over here at all? We've already looked in there. Is there no other thing we can interact with over here? did that already. Okay. Did we do everything for this? An old monument stands. We did. The only thing I can think about is uh, near the other area we had um, in the apartment block where we met the, the Sunday friend and everything. When we walked out on, back out onto the back balcony our character noticed someone peeking through the blinds. Uh, what is this? You see a set of tire tracks in the brown slush that covers the plaza mosaic. How come I've never noticed this before? We already know what this is. The tire tracks were left here by an unknown event that took place some days ago. It's a message, written in the language of burnt rubber. Some of that rubber stuck to the tiles right in front of the whirling in rags. This is point A. The driver started there, and then accelerated straight into the fence, left a hole big enough for the Franco-Nigerian cavalry, according to the cafeteria manager. The driver proceeded to back out of the yard barely stopping before hitting the adjacent building. Before heading south, must have been in a hurry. This is where I started off with my motor carriage before sinking it into the sea. No wonder the cafeteria manager seemed frustrated when he was giving us directions to the yard. Well, you did provide us with a very convenient access point to the crime scene. That is kind of crazy. I didn't realize that that was the gonna... The tracks are as they have ever been. A bit more worn, perhaps. Guys, I'm sorry I didn't see that earlier. What the heck? Okay. So then maybe we need to think about visually paying attention to other things. So like, this is unlocked now. Is there anything else new in here? The trash container stands in the spring snow. The smell of rotten food rises to greet you. You see soggy cartons, dirty rags, and organic waste. The container sounds a muffled gong. Okay. Can I talk to her over the fence? I know she doesn't like us sneaking up on her, but let's see if she says anything different. Kuno, the pig's getting pretty close to me. Come to snuff my shit out, I think. Looks like it's time for me to go, Kuno. Pig's come to take me in. I just want to ask some questions. I'm going away for a long, long time, Kuno. Going away for life. What's going on there? Fuck are you trying to pull, pig? You there behind the fence. What are those strange words you use? What, what words was she using? <laughs> kind of weird dialogue. Hold on. What are those strange words you're using? I come from the woods, Kutavitu. You don't want to go there with me. You don't want to see what I've seen. Don't be traumatizing here. Eh? Get the fuck out of here. So she would not say anything else? I'll die before I squeal, pig. I don't know what, what would be any different from these ones. You there behind the fence. You don't want to fuck with me. I got my hands bloody. I'm not here, pig. You're not seeing this. You can still see the top of her hat from behind the fence. I mean, it's not really giving me any I'll negative stuff. I squeal, pig. Can we just 
talk. What's this kid shit? Fucking mind games. I'd rather die than squeal. Get the fuck out of here, face. You got son? Talk to me. There's really no way to get through to this. Okay, is it just the converse one? Hold on. I'll die before I squeal. Murder was the case. Was the case they gave me. She almost vanished behind the fence. Only the top of her hat remains. Okay, so does that change anything with Kuno? Sorry, guys. One second. Fuck, does Kuno care? Empathy is another Kuno one. Kuno doesn't... Hmm. Oh my gosh. Let's move, please. Okay. We've already gone in this building like a bazillion times. That's where we mail the other stuff. I noticed the drunken guy is gone. I kind of wish I would have talked to him more before he scooted out of here. I mean, has anything changed with you guys? We only have a few more minutes till we can call the library and at least get that off the list. We did report the death, so someone should be taking the body away from the dock. The purity of snow always reminds me of the purity of a man's soul. If he's got principles. Uh, oh, I understand Jeanne Marie was important to you. There's nothing for you to understand here. It is not her death you are investigating. He snaps at you. Okay. What happened with you and with you, Gaston and Jean Marie? I was 22 when I returned from King Guillaume's Akira operation in the south and found my sweetheart in the arms of this wretch. The Aikira operation was a seven-year campaign during which suzerain Guillaume's army forcefully united the people in the southeastern part of La Petite Continent, collectively known as the Aikira tribes under the Revisholian banner. I won her back, but while I was dealing with some issues... You were like a dark cloud sucking the joy out of every living thing around you. And you, you, hurt her. Dark Cloud. That sounds unpleasantly familiar. I, uh, I... He looks down at his boots, lips unmoving, but the words are inaudible. Those days and memories are gone. He nods and looks Renee with something resembling compassion. The old soldier says nothing, but when his glance quickly runs over Gaston's face, there's an odd look in his eyes. Drama's legendary. Is there anything we can wear to do this? I mean, I doubt we would ever make this, but... It needs drama. Are there any good clothes that'll give us... Drama? That one does. This one. Oh, God. Oh, my gosh. We are really going. <laughs> Hold on. Let's see if this changes anything. Hold on. I'm just genuinely curious if this really, like, so it was 28% before, right? The purity of snow always reminds me of the purity of a man's soul. Ooh, that went up quite a bit. Holy cow. 83%. Go long. Oh, shit. Go, Go unconventional. I cannot believe it. So maybe let's, let's wear all conceptualization stuff and see if that helps us get the paintbrush and make the deal. Hold on, hold on. We're, we're on to something. I mean, I knew that like it affected it, but not that much. We went from 28% to 84% or something. Holy cow. Uh, go long, go deep, go unconventional. My story doesn't have gunfire, blood, or spilled guts, but let me give you a different take on heroism. Sure, officer. Let's hear your take. 
Imagine just flickering into existence from nothingness. I'm not following you. He'll get it. Don't worry. Just continue. Imagine. He's gonna be impressed. Okay. Uh, imagine knowing nothing but the sweet oblivion only to wake up in unbelievable pain. Imagine pain that makes giving birth seem like a mosquito bite, but inside your head points to your head. Imagine waking up with a terrible headache. Let's start with number one. Imagine knowing nothing but a sweet oblivion only to wake up in unbelievable pain. The man stares at you, silently frowning. Doesn't look like he's imagining it. Right. When, when you're willing to do just about anything to just make it stop, you open up your eyelids. The carabiner crosses his arms and spits in the crater. And realize your mind, everything that was you, is gone. You realize the man body with you in it is just a husk now, all memories erased. You realize that you've pushed yourself too far past the point of no return. We'll still keep with one. And you realize your mind, everything that was you is gone. You're talking about getting blackout shit face drunk <laughs> and going into delirium, right? He asks impatiently. I don't think he's getting it. The lieutenant looks up from his notes and nods to the old carabiner. I'm talking about so much more than that. Well, Drag out a pause. In essence, yes. How dare you belittle my voyage to the void? Well, I'm talking about a little more than just that. How so, then? He leans in with his hands on his hips. His tone is like that of a drill sergeant addressing new recruits. Look, I don't think anyone's ever been so drunk. It must be a record. It was a transcendent event I saw behind the veil. I still feel terrible, Renee, sickly, panicky, outright. You sad, you name it. The crazier, let's just do crazy. I saw the veil. The lieutenant sighs audibly, <laughs> but keeps his eyes on the notebook. Oh no, Kim's done with my bullshit already. And I thought getting my knees shattered and surviving on rat carcasses in the trench was bad. Here, have one of my medals. <gasps> You've earned it, officer. <laughs> I don't know how it goes to that. Extremely rigid principles this old soldier has. Don't leave room for a change of heart or backing out. The medal is yours. Thank you, Renee. I'm honored. The veteran of numerous armed conflicts extends his right arm with the setting sun in his clenched fist and an expression of utter disbelief in his eyes. Flashes of bloody and terrible scenes of war. Men dying, horses shrieking, blood sinking into sand and snow and asphalt and fertile black earth. All of this accompanied by a musical composition telling of heroism of old, when men were bigger in both body and heart. You feel strange kinship to this old soldier. You and him are the same now. Was there something else you wanted to take from us? I don't think there was anything else he wanted, was there? You go Okay, we got his medal. I was not honestly expecting that. Rhetoric. Okay. Um. Interesting. What is this considered a shirt? It's a jacket. Sure. Sure, we'll go with this. Although, I mean, I'm wearing the shoes now, I guess, to empathy. Interesting, okay. So what are these ones? Sure. We'll... We'll go with that. <laughs> we'll just go with that. I don't know how we're gonna work out this other one. We're minus one to logic, but whatever. We're just gonna... Let's see, was there anything new with him now that we've spoken to him? And then we'll go make the phone call to the library real quick. 
It is such a pleasure to see you again, officer. How may I head the citizens' militia on this fine day? Okay, let's talk more about Jean-Marie. Sweet, sweet Jenny. Ask away, officer. I knew her all my life. Oh, uh, what happened to her? She died of pneumonia two winters ago. It was a quiet passage. Peaceful. He smiles faintly. Honey and I were both by her bedside when she... He pauses, searching for the right word. Died. No use sugarcoating it. Won't bring her back. Will it now? Departed. Hmm. Until the very hand she couldn't decide between us. The most indecisive woman I've ever met. Why do you think she was indecisive? She could never make up her mind about anything. What to have for breakfast, favorite color, or which one of us to marry. The look in his eyes is happy and distant. She was always leaving one of us for the other, but never long enough to actually get married. <laughs> Nothing wrong with weighing her options. Heck, <laughs> technically, we're both still engaged to her. You always confused her. Couldn't let us be happy. Seduced her with your fancy words and pastries. He suddenly remembers you are still there. Falls silent and turns away. Okay. Of course, officer. Alright. Let's uh let's make that call now that we finally can make the phone call. So that was interesting. We got his medal. I was honestly not expecting him to believe a damn word from us, but I guess. Sure. Inside, you see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone, a pull-out toolbox, and the soft glow of the fuel preheater gauge. Okay, radio. This is precinct fifty seven. How may I assist you? Now, I might try these two again. Um, they're still lit up like we can make a call again, but let's do the Jamrock Public Library. Hold on, officer. I've got Central Jamrock Public Library on the line, and I've already introduced you to their librarian. Connecting the call in two, one. Yes, this is Central Jamrock Public Library here. How can I help you, officer? He sounds worried, yet ready to assist um, this is how people get when the police call okay i'm looking for any information you can provide on billy Majin. Majan, a reader billy billy Majan, you said give me a moment i'll have to check our database he puts down the receiver yes hello are you still there i found billy Majan's home address is that all right no phone number unfortunately they're too poor to have a phone line. Uh, yeah, the home address is fine. Here we go, sir. Rue de saint Gislain, 33B, apartment number 20. It's in Martinez, I believe. Capeside Apartments, it says. That's all. That's where the smoker on the balcony lives, isn't it? Interesting. Okay. Uh, do you have any other information on Billy Magin? It says here that they returned their last book just a few days ago, but I wasn't at work that day. Uh, do you know who was? Marie? Marie? Do you remember a reader named Billy Majon? They returned a Tibalt book the other day. You hear someone from a far answer. Yes, it, it was my colleague Marie. Uh, she said that it was Billy's husband who returned the book. He also asked for this new sci-fi release, Lowe's Radio City 87. But we don't have it yet. Good. You have a name now. So Billy Magin is a woman, not a man. How did your colleague know that it was her husband? Do you know the husband's name? So every time we meet up with the guy on the balcony, so not not his Sunday friend, unquote, but uh, the balcony smoker is what they call him, right? Our our character is trying to pretty much assess that he's gay, right? I'm, I'm almost certain that that's what it is. Um, so I don't know if I want to ask this first one because it's obviously like his husband is his husband, right? Uh, do you know his name? Sorry, no. Marie only knows him by sight. I guess we'll just ask it to keep it along. So Billy Mijan is a woman, not a man. How did your colleague know that? Marie knows Billy. She's been working here longer than me. Sometimes her husband returns some books for her. Wait. Goes for a little drink later, on okay. the lookout. 
Maybe not? Wait a second, can Marie describe to me what the husband looked like? Marie? A moment passes. She said it was an older man, and that she's pretty sure he'd had a drink or two the last time she saw him. What was he wearing? Uh, one second. Uh, the, li the librarian turns away from the phone again and relays the question. Sorry, Marie wasn't really paying any attention to that. Thank you, that's all. I have no other questions. Happy we could help. Goodbye, officer. The librarian hangs up the call and gets redirected back to the station with a soft click. Anything else you need from me? Um, let's try to talk to Sylvie again. Uh, please connect me with Sylvie again. Just a second, officer. <laughs> Sylvie Malaika on the line for you, officer. Yes, hello? Hey, Sylvie, it's the police again. Oh, great. What else do you need, detective? Have you seen my gun? Please, no. Not this again. Everyone saw your cool gun, detective. She sounded beyond exasperated. I showed you my gun. When did that happen? You were trying to impress some people with it. Everyone was eating, and... She stops hesitantly, not sure if she should continue, and what, what did I do? You were waving it around in everyone's face, begging them to describe it. You said it calms you, and then you started making suicide jokes. It, it got pretty graphic. Okay. Oh, those again. I have been trying to wean you off them. Off of what? You know... When you put your gun, your actual gun, on your temple and pretend to shoot your brains out, God. off of that, people don't like that. Mm, I remember this. You were screaming things like, my brains are all over the wall, painting them red. I won't be seeing it, cause these are my brains. I can't see without my brains. Very nice visuals there. All right, rhetoric. Some poor sod was trying to eat his pudding while you were screaming, spit flying, imitating the mercy shot right next to him. Spat some in his food. I don't think he touched it after. Dear God, I should have. Oh no, we're not gonna do that. Why would I threaten to kill myself? I mean, look at this world. I would, I would love to stay. Okay, I don't know what to say. Yes, but what happened to the gun? Okay, I don't know what to say. Me neither. Uh, do you know what happened to the gun? No idea. All I know is next to were waving around money instead. Saying things like, big bucks cannot lie, and guns can't buy money, but money can always buy guns. It almost looked like he pawned it. But believe me, I did not ask. Alright, I think we got everything. You hear the call breaking up on the other end of the radio, and then the already familiar voice. Anything else I can help you with, officer? Um, let's end it for right now. I want to see. In the cabin, you see. A... I want to see if I put on like spirit to corpse stuff. Uh, I try to call the precinct one more time. Which one's better? Plus one to this. I mean, that gives us two. So hold on. Conceptualization. Spirit to corpse plus shivers plus visual calculus. Hold on. What are the ones giving me right now? Empathy to let's do with the logic. Don't need drama. Electrochemistry, but what does this give us? Plus one to Kingdom of Conscience. Uh, okay. Empathy, we're keeping on our regular shoes because that's composure. Logic, perception, logic. Inland Empire versus... And Volition, we'll keep that on. Perception. Composure. Put those on. Okay. Where does this go? Oh. Okay, let's go to our journal. What is it saying? 
Uh, go to Billy Mejean's apartment to deliver the bad news. It's the apartment number 20 in North Martinez. Apartment number 20. Okay. Alright, we'll do that in a second. Let me, uh... Let me just see if anything changes with this. Inside, you see a set of steering levers, a radio microphone, a pull-out toolbox. This is Precinct 57. How may I assist you? Uh... Can you... Well... I'll tell him about the car. We'll just hang up. Let's see what it gives us. Can you call 41st for me? Just a moment, officer. Ten four, come in, officer. Over. I'm uh, happy to report that I found my badge. Ten four, sir. Glad to hear that. I'll write down that there is no need to issue a new one to use in. Over. Okay, uh, this might sound odd, but there's personal details I'd like to discuss. Ten four, sir. Sorry, but I'm under orders to give a negative to request for personal information. Over. Ah, uh, understood. Ten four. Anything else, sir? Over. Roger that. Ten ten. Over and out. Okay, never mind. I just thought it would have other info for me. I mean, we could have pressed, I guess, but I don't want to be weird. Um, so let's go to that apartment real quick. I don't think we can get in that way. Oh, I want to see if I can... Uh, it's conceptualization, right? I don't know if I have a lot of clothes for conceptualization or not. We'll go into the building first. Let's see if we can get the paintbrush from her, and if we think we can convince a higher amount for that, then maybe we can make the deal for a... Mega rich light bending guy. Okay. Um, what's our amount for right now? Hello again, officers. Have you come to admire my mural? It's eight percent. Okay. Let's see if we can bump up those numbers. Okay. Uh Savoir fair, empathy. Savoir fair, perception, logic, inland. I thought I had one for uh, conceptualization. Maybe not. Maybe I'm already wearing it. So it was 8% before. What was this one give us? Logic, but minus to authority. I don't know what's going to change for us. It didn't really give us much of anything. Okay. Hold on. So 8%, did that change this at all? Hello again, officers. No. Have you come to admire my mural? Never mind. Okay, let's go back in here. Okay, it's apartment 20, right? They said. Keep hitting E, guys. Sorry about that. Anything new in there? No. Nope. Do you have anything new to say, old lady? Give me a moment. Oh, yeah. Uh, I'm looking for Billy Mejean. Do you know where, he, where she lives? It's about Victor, isn't it? It's always about Victor with her. You'll find the measures in apartment 20 upstairs. It's one of those doors on the balcony. Got it. Okay. Let's go. Nothing new there. Balcony. Oh, maybe this one? A weathered brown door. Oh, yep. The number reads 20. Something smells good. Soup a The lieutenant motions to you 
to go ahead and knock. This is the door. You already know it's the right door. This is going to be so hard. Get yourself together. It's just police work. Okay, Inland Empire and Volition. Hold on. Let's do Empathy. Um, okay. We'll put on our normal tie. Okay, I think our other stuff is probably pretty decent. So let's try this again. A weathered brown door. Something's the lieutenant. This is the door. You already know it's the right door. Um, hold this on. is going to be so hard. Hold on, Kim. We should probably discuss this before we move on. What should we expect? You're right. It's still this true. He looks at the apartment door and lowers his voice a bit. You hear some light footsteps and what appears to be a daily weather forecast playing on the radio. We have our first preliminary identification. In all likelihood, the deceased is the husband of Billy Mejean. We need to confirm this, as well as deliver the death notification to Billy herself. Now, delivering a death notification is never an easy task. There's a reason why it's often called the most stressful part of our job. This is why it's usually done in pairs. You got this. I'll be monitoring reactions, ready to act if necessary. Um, do you know, do you have any advice on how I could tell her it? Dad, just don't say that you know how they feel. You don't. Okay. Good advice. I mean, we gotta do it. I'm not gonna try to bail out of it. Let's do it. The lieutenant motions towards the door. Let's knock. Hello? Who is it? A voice calls from the other side of the door. And someone turns down the radio. Look at the lieutenant first. He gives you a short, encouraging nod. Okay, is Billy... Is this Ma Billy Mejean's house? Uh, this is the police. Please open the door. The police? A moment, please. Give us a moment. You hear shuffling inside. Tidying up. Nervously. There's fear in her voice. Uh-oh. Come in. The door is open. Okay. Let's head in there. Actually, this is probably like the cleanest apartment I've seen in any of the... <laughs> In any of this stuff, uh, the setup's fairly similar to the balcony smoker's house as well. Um, there's actually a lot of stuff to look at. So guys, um, I'm going to end this here. We're at 40, 45-ish minutes, 43 minutes. Um, we will speak with her about her dead husband and see why she's so nervous. Something else maybe is going on. Um, and then after that... Uh, maybe we'll get another lead on how to solve this. Otherwise... We might want to check what this perception check was for this. We know it's conceptualization for Cindy and the mega light. I really want to make the offer to the mega rich light bending guy and get the paintbrush so we can paint that thing. But otherwise, we'll start with this when we come back. Thanks so much for joining me. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye for now.